Uh, my name is Sofia Monsalve. Uh, I'm the Secretary General of FIAN International. Um, FIAN International is a human rights organization. We have seen an enormous increase of repression around the world, uh, especially for those people um, struggling for the control over natural resources, over land, killings, persecution, and all over uh, the place. Now, uh, the challenges are huge because since they don't have uh, protection of the rights at national level because of uh, an authoritarian system in place, they go to the international level, to the UN human rights system or regional human rights systems in order to uh, look for uh, redress um, and remedy. Now, the problem that we are seeing today is that this international architecture of human rights is failing, is fading away. Um, it had problems in the past, particularly in delivering um, justice, in having effective mechanisms of um, um, justiciability or accountability in place, because those who were there were based basically on US and European uh, foreign policy with all the problematic aspects that they had. But now, um, liberal democracies, if you want, uh, are not anymore <laughs> so interested uh, in defending uh, human rights at the international level. And on the other hand, we, had, uh, we have uh, countries like Russia or China uh, extremely skeptical uh, about human rights uh, for different reasons. So in such a situation, uh, what are we going to do? Um, as human rights organizations, I think uh, we have to defend um, the principles and norms which are still in place, but we have to be very honest about uh, the limitations of the, if you want, a previous uh, international architecture. So the challenge for us is to imagine uh, a new uh, human rights and probably to a large extent um, a new international order. Uh, if, mm, if we want to reform the UN or if you want something fundamentally different uh, in, in place. This is a conversation that we need to have. Um, especially with social movements, because uh, we are convinced that FIAN, that social movements and grassroots and, and people's movements are going to be the political force uh, which are going to sustain this new invention, this, this, this new um, way to, to defend uh, and stand up for human rights. But uh, what we see is that social movements um, have been, some of them are very outspoken about human rights, but some of them are ambivalent uh, about human rights. Mm, perhaps because they perceived human rights still uh, within the limitations of, let's say, US foreign policy. And I think they have good reasons to be skeptical um, towards such a system. But I think uh, with the collapse <laughs> in a global scale of, let's say, um, democracy and um, mm, uh, political institutions working for, for a dignified human life, I think that the challenge is so fundamental that we need to have also this fundamental conversation about what are the norms and values which will inform um, our emancip emancipatory politics and practices. So if you take the example of Via Campesina, for instance, uh, and other rural social movements uh, which are, um, have been calling for a declaration on the rights of peasants, this declaration will entail uh, new conceptions of human rights, like for instance, a much stronger emphasis on collective rights, uh, because we still tend to think that human rights only have this individual dimension. But when you talk in terms of, if, if you live, um, especially the relationship with nature, for instance, with land, with water, with seeds, is, is a, is a, a community-based relationship, actually. So if you don't protect a collective subject of rights, like a community, you will be failing uh, in delivering fundamental human rights for the rural population. So this is, uh, this is changing the relationship between nature and human dignity, which I think in the existing uh, human rights treaties is still seen as uh, nature is something totally different uh, from society or from human beings. 
And I think what the declaration on the, on the rights of peasants will change is that no, there is a there is natural the relationship with nature is co-foundational of the human dignity, and this is uh, already kind of a uh, extremely profound um, development for human rights, not just for some groups, but in a more universal basis. So um, they are engaging with that, but we also need to engage not only in the conceptual framework, but also in the institutional framework. But this is not a, let's say, a technocratic conversation, what institutions to put in place, but in our days is a, f a profoundly political conversation because we need these new political forces which are emancipatory uh, and which are not constituted yet there. Because uh, what we have been saying these two days is precisely that uh, the left um, forces have uh, lost a vision uh, for the future, right? So it's, it's the right wing forces now which are putting, uh, mm, I don't know, um, visions or uh, ways to go, but the left forces uh, are not.